on Harvard quite a bit in, in your book as well as being a global nexus producing anti-India, breaking India poison. Um, why Harvard and, ha and, you know, are there any other universities, do you think, as well, doing the same thing, being anti-Hindu? So, so I've been surveying this for a very long time. I'm, I'm, I've been very close to Harvard because, you know, when my foundation started out, uh, we treated them as friends. We, we gave them grants. We had Indology conferences. We funded uh, visiting professorships multiple times, gave them over 100000 a year each time for a visiting professorship. So we did a lot of projects at Harvard. And I've mentioned that in a big chapter, my history of dealing with Harvard. So it's not like I'm ignorant. I've been, I'm very involved with lots of people in Harvard. And I, I appreciate a lot of good things about Harvard also. But the bias that Harvard has against India is very old. From the beginning, you know, their view towards China and their view towards India has been very different. And that's because the Chinese managed Harvard. Indians did not manage Harvard. So there's a huge chapter in this book on how China is treated at Harvard and how the Chinese have funded different things at Harvard to promote their ideology and their point of view. And India has India has done exactly the opposite. India has given them the money and let Harvard choose the, uh, define the discourse. And the Indians who've gone there are the leftist anti-India people. This has become worse during the Modi era, but it was also bad during the previous era. They were anti-Indian civilization to begin with. They were funding, they were bringing in Khalistanis, Kashmir separatists. Anyone who has a gripe against India would be welcome at Harvard. So we decided that, and you know, Harvard has a power that no other place in terms of its global brand, in terms of uh, how they train the government in India. The Indian government sends uh, IS people and Indian foreign service people for training uh, on governance in Harvard. So imagine that Harvard is training how to govern India. It's like Oxford used to train the British people how to govern India. Now Harvard is doing that. And we have discussed that in this book. And Harvard is also developing policies on various issues in India, all kind of issues in India, and teaching. And they are the ones who feed uh, Washington. They are the ones who feed the Congress, the Senate, the White House, the US Commission on International Religious Freedom, all this discussion on whether India is religiously free or not, all these discussions on how democracy is going down in India, they start at Harvard. So what starts at Harvard doesn't stay at Harvard. And mm -hmm. it has more influence than anyone else. And, and this is why we picked Harvard. And we came up with some shocks about the extent to which Indian billionaires are behind all this by funding them. I was going to ask you about that a little later. But how does this all impact the people of Indian origin in the United States? So, you know, what has happened is this critical race theory has morphed into critical caste theory. So there are, there, there are groups here uh, encouraged by this whole left-wing left -wing ecosystem. Uh, one of them is called uh, Equality Labs, uh, based in New York, uh, funded by all these sort of people, huge funding, and there are others. They are claiming that caste is race, and this whole, uh, this, uh, they've developed from critical race theory, they've developed a critical caste theory, and that is what's being taught everywhere. Uh, you will find American co congressmen and senators who five years ago never heard of this are quoting this all, all over the place. And so there are there is litigation going on in Silicon Valley uh, against the Indians uh, who are in management positions by calling them Brahmins who are exploiting Dalits. So this business that uh, the caste abuse has entered the United States because of the Indian diaspora. The Indian diaspora has brought in caste. And this whole theory that uh, the, the Aryans created this origin of this caste system mm -hmm. and it is embedded in the Vedas. And then this uh, the British learned it in India and the British are the ones who brought it to America and started racism because of their knowledge of caste in India. And then the Germans learned it from there. So all this is so much nonsense and that, that you know, you have to go to the root. Where is it coming from? Who is behind all this? And that is Harvard. Uh, today, it is Harvard more than anyone else, which is perpetuating this. Uh, and they, they bring they are, they are creating the identity, this ideology, and they are bringing in a lot of young people and brainwashing them into this mode. Some of them are already brought because they are anti-India. And so Harvard gives them respectability, gives them dignity, gives them money, gives them a home, gives them a podium to, you know, big microphone, to a big uh, 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 speaker system to 
broadcast to the world. So Harvard has unparalleled power to dismantle India intellectually. And all these things that, you know, you, we heard about this dismantling Hindu phobia, all of that kind of Hindu, Hindu, Hindutva, dismantling Hindutva conference that happened a, a year or two ago. People didn't dig deep enough to figure out where is all this coming from. There are spokespersons all over here, there, and there. Somebody like an Audrey Truske is a tiny, small fry. She doesn't invent much on her own, but she's supported by a whole ecosystem. So you got to, and in, Rutgers is not some big, mighty ecosystem. They're just a few regular professors who, in the bigger scheme of things, are not even that important. Uh, mm -hmm. But what happens is the mothership of Harvard is breeding this knowledge, having conferences where such people come in, uh, all these uh, petitions with the Harvard name carry a lot of weight. So the book has about 40%, 50% of the pages are devoted to uh, Harvard as the nest of snakes. Mm -hmm. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.